Here we meet again beneath the mighty Moana Banyan tree beside the sea. The great panorama of Waikiki Beach before us. Old Diamond Head at one end, surfboards and outrigger canoes catching waves out there. This is Webley Edwards speaking for all the islanders, for these many mainlanders from so many places whose voices now rise. We'd be under the covers with a little, a little flashlight and to get the radio station to hear Hawaii calls from the shores of Waikiki. You hear the surf in the background. And so even as a, an elementary school kid, that, that was my vision of, of Hawaii. Uh, I guess it set the first dreams for me. I saw a book about pineapple and sugarcane and the people and how everybody that lived in Hawaii cared for one another. There was something called the Aloha Spirit. And ideas of segregation or ideas of discrimination, lack of respect for the environment, for others, that wouldn't be in Hawaii. As I grew older, I went on to a little college. It was a poster, a yellow poster with kind of a green palm tree on it, teaching assistantships and, and, and sociology. I got on that plane for the first time in my life and, and flew to Hawaii and stepped off that, that plane into the trade winds, 1959. And then Manoa Valley, off Armstrong Street there in, uh, in Oahu. I walked by it with my dog today. There was the plumeria tree. You could smell the plumeria. And you looked up at night, my first night in Hawaii. It was as, as if the gods had thrown a bucket of stars across the sky. I thought, this has to be it for me. And uh, within a day, right at the bottom of the stairs was a uh, uh, a little cottage uh, owned by the Kimura family. Classmates in, in the sociology department introduced me to a Henry Yoshihara, looking for a roommate. So Abercrombie and Yoshihara went up uh, to the Kimuras and, and said, hey, you know, we're, we're students at the UH. Would you consider renting that the, the cottage to us? Sure, but I have to tell you boys, the rent is $50. $50 to that little cottage is there today. and. Uh, so that's within about two blocks of where our, our, our little house is now in, in Lower Manoa. Isn't it something? More than 50 years ago, I came to paradise and the very first day, the very first night I spent, I knew I wanted to be there forever, 1959. You know, in 33 years of being married to Neil, I have felt totally loved and supported and nurtured and maybe even tolerated a little bit. I remember doing my PhD work at my little desk in our cottage in Pu'uhonua Street. He made sure I always had food to eat. He would go up to Tantalus and bring beautiful bouquets of avapuhi, fill the room with them. So it was really nurturing and he made sure I was well taken care of so I could do what I needed to do. I love that about him. I'm just constantly uh, impressed by when, I spoke, when we spent private time together, how he can talk about conflicts, how he can talk about the, what I would regard as the politics which is going on um, in, a, in a way that respects everyone. Uh, he, I, f I feel, has, um, if, if that's a core value for me uh, in Neil. Neil is a very kind and generous person, and he's extremely supportive, not just of Nancy, but of our family as well. Uh, Keiko and I have had the opportunity to know both his mother and Nancy's mother, uh, and to be aware of uh, the, the, the strong role that their aging played in both of their lives, and realize that this is, uh, that this, this interest and commitment to, um, to providing uh, effective uh, care for those who are aging in life is, um, is, is genuine. We'd be on opposite sides on some issues and there'd be all this uh, contention on the floor of the Senate and he might lose on an issue. We all vote one way and he's alone, no. And then he jumps up and he's on to the next issue. And after that, we all go out and have lunch because issues are not, you know, not the core of friendship. And we all knew that he would not change if he really felt strongly about an issue. 
was to take Manoa Finance. That was a very difficult issue years ago. And he really felt for the, the older Japanese people who were going to lose their life savings. He was the only one that was at these meetings. I used to go to them, but he would stand up and just, you know, fight for them and make sure that they got all their money back because he worried about them. He knew that they needed help and he was there for them. And, you know, I, I just admire that in anyone. Uh, you could go to Tin Tins and Wofats. And the Alakea Grill. The school was out, went down on the weekend because I was going to go to one of the theaters and down in Toyo. I might be the only Holly boy in the, in, in the place at that time. The idea of, of honor and duty. What was Giri all about? Tatsuya Nakadai and Zatoichi, the blind swordsman. I mean, I like, I got a smile on my face now because I mean, it might seem corny to some people now, but those films were about values. What was honor all about? How, how was one an honorable person? You can't take that necessarily out of a film, but people live that here. I'll give you an example of, of, of perseverance and, and endurance and patience. Uh, not many people know uh, when you say the word Hano Uli Uli, when folks from the Japanese Cultural uh, Center uh, took me there and asked me as a member of Congress, can you help us? I didn't even know it, it, it had existed. And, and many people did not. Nobody spoke about it. It was kind of hidden away. Well, Hano Uli Uli was, was an internment camp. You may not know it, but there was uh, internment camps here uh, on Oahu where Japanese Americans were taken because they were Japanese. It's a gulch. You step off. You step off the top of that gulch and you disappear. The world, which is wide open from, from all the way from Diamond Head, all the way out past the Wine Eyes, the whole ocean in front of you disappears. That world of an endless horizon goes away. All of a sudden, you are enclosed in a, in a universe that shrinks with every step, eliminated from contact with, uh, with other people. That's why Hana Uli Uli has to be uh, revived, not just in people's memories, but physically, so that we can see, here's, here's what it was like to be shut away, to be shut out. We can't have that in Hawaii or anywhere else in the world. Our diversity has to define us, not divide us. That's the whole essence. That's the message uh, of Hawaii. That's the message of Hana Uli Uli, that our diversity should be our glory. It should not be our pain. Neil has always supported uh, Native Hawaiian issues. I mean, even before he was in politics. Uh, one of the great ironies of Hawaii political history is the fact that the Akaka Bill passed the House of Representatives three times under Neil's leadership. The same Neil that made a commitment to Hawaii, made a commitment to help for the return of Kaha Olavi. And if he says that he's going to do something, he'll do it. In fact, his first day in office, right after being sworn in, went to the state capitol, abolished furloughs, so, and, and made an appropriation to uh, um, the Department of Education to, to support education. He restored um, social services that had been cut under the previous administration, and he showed that he was on the side of the people. He did that on the first day. He didn't even go to the party yet. You know, you get sworn in, you go up there, and you do it. That's Neil. That's Neil Abercrombie. That's the same Neil Abercrombie today that he was before. It's easy today to get very cynical, but uh, take a look at what's been achieved in Hawaii. The Hawaiian Renaissance. Kane Kapila at Andrews Amphitheater uh, with the Sunday Manoa, uh, Peter Moon and the Brothers Casimiro, the, the Ho'opili Brothers from Maui. And Raymond Kane, I got to know Gabby at the Columbia Inn, the Kaha Sons of Ni'ihau. And everyone, first film to be done of Hula in a respectful and, and informative way with Vicky Holt Takamini. Everywhere you went, there was conversation and laughter. And uh, when I got elected to the legislature in the early 1970s, with Dickie Wong from Farrington High School. I think they tried to find something for us to do, Dickie and I. <laughs> we invented the Culture and Arts Committee. Working with uh, Charlie Taguchi, in the, in the, uh, who subsequently became superintendent of schools and on the Education Committee, we got the Kupuna program underway. We got Hawaiian Immersion, and we're part of that, that whole uh, experience of, of uh, not the revival, but the revitalization. That's when I met my, my uh, Auntie Aggie Cope who uh, annoyed me.
My mom came to visit, and, and, uh, and Auntie Aggie, whom I'd met because of, of her work on the Waianae Coast with culture and arts for the kids, uh, she met my mother and, and told my mother that she, that she wanted to annoy me. And uh, my mom went to visit and stayed with Auntie Aggie and met my brother, Kamaki Kanahele. And, uh, um, and I was annoyed to her. And uh, now that my, my mom has passed um, and, uh, and my, my mama, Auntie Aggie, still advises me. I love a meal. I love a meal very, very much like my own son. And I talk to him like my own, that he was. I birthed him like he was my own, and he knows that. And my brother and I, I, I I've never ever seen Neil as not being Hawaiian. He's my brother, and I've always had his back, and he's always had my back. And you can't get better than that for two brothers. I'll never forget the first uh, real encounter I had with my husband, Neil. I think it was about 9.30 in the morning, and then it got very dark, and we both realized it was almost 7 o'clock in the evening. One of the deepest memories I have is how Neil was supportive of women, especially working women. He was a mentor. He was a mentor to me that day before I even knew it. You know, she, she knew what she was in for, and, uh, and she went on, got her degrees, her undergraduate degree, two master's degree, a, a PhD. So in, in the course of events, uh, we, we did not have children of our own. Neil and I were thinking about the really intense, profound moments of our life together. And certainly one of those um, has been the ability to create a really loving Hanai family here in Hawaii that I, I guess a lot of people don't even know about. Young men and women whom we love and cherish and, and count as family. A little door opened for them or a little understanding and a little support. Education has been really the most important value to both Neil and myself. His mother was a teacher, we've all been teachers. We talk about being global citizens and certainly citizens of uh, Hawaii. Ne. And I think our Hanai family sort of represents that. We have a Hanai son from England, one from Zimbabwe, a young woman from Uzbekistan, some from the mainland and from here. And uh, that's one of the ways that we were able to relate to our Hanai family, was by stressing their education. And I hope we were able to provide the guidance that really allowed them to, to make their dreams come true. The triumph of Aloha is the capacity for ourselves to reach out to others as an extension of our, of our humanity, the ha, the breath of life, the exchange of life with one another, our recognition of each other as brothers and sisters. So uh, Hawaii is this incredible combination of uh, ethnicities blending together with uh, what Abraham Lincoln called the better angels of our nature, uh, putting together those values uh, that are, are, are best understood through the, the spirit of aloha so that our, our, our diverse backgrounds combine uh, to unite us and not divide us. I've supported Neil for, for all this time, over 40 years, because of his integrity, uh, his compassion. Uh, he is always out there um, doing the right thing. Sometimes at, at you know, at political uh, expense. I don't even have to think about why I support Governor Abercrombie. I've known Neil for over 40 years. He's honest, he cares, and he's someone that uh, I can trust. He also understands that Hawaii is very diverse. Hawaii is not just like any other place. And so he has been a proponent of making sure that different kinds of programs are available for families as well. Neil Abercrombie has done a lot for the people of Hawaii. And as I said before, you know, we owe him another four years. That's how we can say thank you, Neil.